To add a simulation object and set its properties, you first have to be in layout mode. When you start a new project, the simulation is in layout mode, but after running your simulation, it's in analysis mode, where adding an object is not allowed. Next you have to decide where in the object tree you want to place your objects. Then add the object of your choice by entering the script command associated with that object. To set the properties of an object, you first have to select it and then set the properties. We will learn various commands associated with each of these steps. You can check your simulation mode by looking at the top of the simulation window at the Run or Layout toggle button. When you see the Run button active here, it means that you are in layout mode. You can do the same by using the layout mode command. It returns 1 if you are in layout mode and 0 when in analysis mode. Finally, to set the simulation to layout mode, you can use the switch to layout command. When you add an object using script, by default it's placed under model, which is the root of the object tree. For example, here we add a rectangle under model by simply using the command add rect. If you want to add it under a structure group or an analysis group, you have to specify the group where the object is to be placed. You can do this by going into that group using the group scope command and adding the object there, or by using the add to group command, as done here for a rectangle. After working under a certain subgroup, it's a good idea to set the group scope back to model. To do that, just use group scope double colon model. Group scope dimer is the same as group scope model double colon dimer. The naming of the script commands for adding objects is very intuitive, taking the general format of add plus the object name. For example, add triangle, add FGTD, add dipole, and add index for adding a triangle structure, FGTD simulation region, dipole source, and index monitor respectively. When you add an object, it's automatically selected, as shown here with Add Circle. So there's no need to select the object if you're going to set its properties right after adding it. To select an existing object, use the Select command and specify the object name. For example, here we select the rectangle with name rect underscore 1. Note that when you select an object with this command, previously selected objects are unselected. If you want to select an object without unselecting previous ones, use shift select as done here to include circle underscore one in the selection. Select all selects all objects in the current group scope. And select partial selects any objects with a given partial name. For example, here we select all objects with a name that includes the string rect. To set the properties of the selected object, use the set command and specify the name and new value of the property you want to modify. You can use set named instead to select the object you want and set its property at the same time. The names of parameters are mostly the same as they appear in the edit object window. However, there can be some exceptions. For example, if you use the parameter name profile in the set command, to specify the PML profile of your boundary, you will get an error message. The correct name for this parameter is PML profile. The value of this parameter appears to be a string. However, parameter values without any inverted triangle in the drop-down menu take numbers, which correspond to the position of the string in the drop-down menu. So if you want to set the profile to standard, you need to use set PML profile comma 1. If you see a parameter with a tick box, you can enable or disable it by setting its value to 1 or 0. You can also use true or false. Note that true and false are predefined constants with values of 1 and 0 respectively. For example, here we can enable the property same settings on all boundaries by setting the property value to true. 
If you are not sure what the exact name of a parameter is, use question mark get or question mark set after selecting the object. To check the current value of a parameter and check if it's a string or a number, select the object and use question mark get parameter name. You can use get named to select the object and get its property at the same time.